Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome if you are new here and if you are um, joining me again, welcome back. Um, in today's video I am going to be going through my birth story which has been highly requested so I thought I'd best get on it and get that filmed for you guys. Um, if you haven't already, um, please do subscribe to my channel and um, just click the subscription bu button down below if you don't mind um, and at the end of the video if you liked it please do give it a thumbs up um, and also any comments I will try and get those responded to so if you want to leave anything down there, anything you want to see, anything like that then please do leave that down below somewhere for me. So let's crack on with the birth story. So it all kicked off when I was about 31 weeks pregnant. Yeah, it happened exactly the day I turned 31 weeks pregnant actually. Um, so I'd gone and got my lashes done on the Thursday night, as all good stories start with lashes. Um, and I'd come home, I'd had dinner, everything like that felt fine um, and then maybe about half past nine I just didn't feel well if not to be too crude on here but I just felt like I needed to poo um, just felt really uncomfortable nothing was happening so I just said to Adam I said I'm going to bed I don't feel great um, hopefully I'll feel better in the morning um, so I went to bed about 10 o'clock and slept uh, woke up at about six in the morning I want to say um, still felt really uncomfortable so came downstairs to not to wake Adam up and you know went into the toilet and then I noticed that I had a very 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 small bit of blood in my pants but obviously anything like that you do have to go and get yourself checked um, so I saw that went upstairs got Adam and said look I need to call the hospital because there's blood in my pants um, so I need to go and get checked out so I rang the I think it was the labour ward because nothing else would be open at that time um, and I explained everything and she said you know it's probably nothing but just come in and I, so I was like okay I think I got there about seven in the morning maybe um, they took me in, I had to wait in the waiting room first um, and then they took me in uh, they hooked me up to the CTG monitor and he was fine, he was moving around. Um, by this point I was in a bit of pain but not like pain pain. Um, so I had to wait for the doctor to come on duty as well so they don't tend to come on at our hospital until around 8 a.m i think i think they work eight till eight but don't quote me on that um so i had to wait for a doctor to come in anyway so they kept me hooked up to a monitor um and i think they noticed that my blood pressure was a little bit high so i did get some blood pressure medication um which i threw up pretty quickly but anyway Um, then I needed to be seen by the doctor so they wanted to um, I think it's called a fibromytosin test which is where they um, swap your cervix and see if you have gone into preterm labour now because I was bleeding that can give you a false positive so they said my test was positive, but I wasn't showing any signs of labour. Um, and they said, because you've got a little bit of blood there, that may show you a positive response. So they said, it's not to worry. Um, it could be a false positive, but we want to monitor you anyway, which was fine. Um, so then I think after they done that, they scanned me and they saw that he was breech. Um, then I think they tested all of my, I think they tested, I had a blood test, a urine test 
and maybe something else. I can't really remember to be honest. I know I had my cannula put in and that took forever um, and that was really painful. Um, and they said that after they tested my wee that I had a bladder infection and it was likely the bit of pain I was feeling sort of down there was likely my bladder trying to contract to get the infection out because I kept saying well are you sure I'm not in labour and they said no 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 if you were having contractions you'd feel them at the top of your belly not like where I was feeling them and they hooked me up to the monitors they felt me manually when I said I was in pain they said no 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 this is just your infection um, trying to get itself out um, so I was like okay um, but I did have to stay in they said I'd have to stay in for 24 hours to be monitored um, and I hadn't taken anything with me so I sent Adam home to come and get me some stuff because I hadn't even packed a hospital bag at this point I was only 31 weeks pregnant so I hadn't got to that point yet um, but he brought it back for me um, and I think he could stay in the room with me until I think he stayed in with me until about 3 in the afternoon um, what really annoyed me, well not annoyed me, but I really wanted a water birth. And at the time I thought if I'm having this baby, they've put me in a water birth room and that really upset me. Um, it was a great room, great room. And if I can ever have a water birth again, I want to go in there. But um, yeah, Adam stayed with me until about three. Now by this point, I was in quite a bit of pain. Not horrific, but I was really uncomfortable. Um, Adam had brought me back my V-shaped pillow um, and I um, had had a few drugs by then. Um, I'd had blood pressure medication, I'd had steroids. Oh, steroids. If you ever have steroids injected in you, I feel you because it hurt. That sensation was horrific. Probably up there with childbirth. Um, so yeah, I threw up quite a few times by this point as well. Um, my body just was trying to obviously expel everything. Um, and then at about three, they said, oh, we're transferring you upstairs now um, to the labor ward so your husband can't come with you. Um, Cause obviously with COVID and everything, no one was allowed to go in the ward with you. Um, so that was fine. They wheeled me up. Um, and I think I was in the room with about three other women, all very, very nice ladies. Um, they'd all had their babies at this point, um, so I was just in the corner. Um, I'd had some medication by this point, so I felt all right again. I was walking around, I was chatting to these ladies, I was watching, um, I was watching YouTube, I was watching Lydia on, Millen on my phone, I'd had dinner, like, in theory, I was living my best hospital life. Um, felt fine, was getting a bit tired because obviously I'd been awake since six. Um, so I think around 10ish, I said like, I'm gonna try and go to sleep now. Like obviously on a labor ward, really hard. Um, but yeah, I tried to go to sleep. I got a little bit of sleep but at two in the morning, I was just throwing up everywhere. Literally, I could not stop. Like I would throw up into one bowl, call the nurse, she'd take it away. And by the time she'd come back, I needed another one. And I just couldn't stop being sick. And bless these ladies with their babies in my room. <laughs> they were having to, I couldn't even press the buzz on myself because I just didn't get time. Um, so they were calling them for me and I was still hooked up to the monitor at this point. I think by this point they wanted me hooked up to it continuously. I think because I was being sick, they wanted me on it like all the time. And I think if I remember right, someone did come and examine me um, to see if anything was happening. Um, and it wasn't, my cervix was still fully closed. So still no signs of labour, um, I was just being sick. Um, and in the end, they said to me that I would have to go downstairs, 
back to the Labour Award because really, if you read between the lines, um, they didn't have enough staff to like keep taking care of me. Um, so she just said, I'll send you down there. Um, we can keep you hooked up to the monitor down there and you'll have one-on-one -on -one care because you'll have a midwife there with you. Um, so that was fine. Um, she'd given me an anti-sickness drug by this point and I'd had my second steroid injection as well so my legs were looking like a bloody pincushion really um, and then I think it was either just before I left the ward and went down to the labour ward or just as I got down to the labour ward um, because I hadn't really slept they'd given me pethidin um, in my leg to um, try and get me some sleep just to knock me out a bit because um, I still had some pain but it like it was fine it wasn't it was bearable I wasn't you know keeling over I wasn't not able to speak or anything like that um, so at that point I rang Adam and was like well I'm downstairs now you can come back and he was like oh okay well I'll come back in the morning and I was like no 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 you can come back now um because he was like oh are you in labor and i was like no and he was like oh, okay then but i was like no no i'd rather you come back which obviously lucky he did um so once i'd had the pethidin i was pretty pretty out of it um adam said that when he got back that i was pretty high you know i couldn't open my eyes Every time someone said pethidin, I, I was just laying there putting my thumb up and asking when I could have some more. Um, and I, I'm, I was kind of in and out of it at this point, so this is the points I don't really remember. Um, but from what I've been told, I was still hooked up to the monitor the whole time unless I needed to go for a wee or they needed me to get up and do something. Um, because the toilets weren't, they didn't have a toilet in the room. That really upset me at the time. I had to like walk out through a corridor and then go to the toilet and obviously I wasn't really dressed. And it just really upset me that I had to keep trying to get dressed, which is really hard when you're high on drugs. Um, so yeah, I think one point I just got up with a t-shirt on and I didn't have any pants on and I went to leave the room and Adam was like, well, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I'm going for a wee. And he was like, uh, do you not want to put some pants on? And I was like, no. I'm fine, I'm fine. Um, so yeah, I, I was pretty in and out of it at that point. Um, and then maybe, oh, maybe six in the morning-ish, they tested my wee again to find any infection markers, which were still there. Um, so I had more antibiotics and then by this point I'd had quite a few bits put into my cannula. I think I'd had another anti-sickness drip, um, a drip to get some fluid in me because I was getting quite dehydrated because obviously I'd been sick so much. Um, and then I think I was had paracetamol maybe, so I had three drips going through. Um, I was still being sick, so even when I was high on pethidin, I was still trying to be sick. Um, sometimes nothing was happening. Um, still hooked up to the monitor. Um, still trying to get some sleep. Adam was sort of resting his head on the bed next to me. Um, yeah, nothing really happened then until I want to say around. Well, about eight, the shift changed. So we were talking to the nurses, Adam more than me, because I was absolutely knackered by this point and my pethidin had started wearing off. So I was like, oh, can I have some more? Because I'm, I'm knackered, I really need to sleep. And they said, oh, no, 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 you're going home like at some point today, so we can't give it to you because then you can't go home. So I was like, oh, okay. Because um, they were still at this point saying, you've got an infection. So I was like, oh, okay. Um, and then I think my actual midwife came on duty at eight o'clock 
um, and she came in and I'd seen her literally on the Tuesday and this was the Saturday when I'd seen her again in the hospital. Um, so yeah, I'd seen her on the Tuesday for my 31 week appointment um, or 30 weeks and she came in, she took the monitor off, held my stomach and said, no, 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 you're not contracting. I don't know what this pain is. And, you know, for all I kept being told was it's just your infection. Um, but you're not contracting, so you know, you're fine, don't worry, we'll, we'll try and get this sorted. So I was like, okay. Because in my head, I'm like, my God, am I having a baby? Um, and all they'd kept telling me as well was he was breached, so I was going to be a C section. And I was like, oh, great, you know, I'm not going to be able to, you know, move for six weeks. And, you know, he's going to be up in neonatal. And if I've had a C section, I can't just get up and go. Um, you know, I've got a rest as well. And, you know, it's, I'm not saying it's better naturally because you are still in pain, um, but it's a lot easier to go and see them. Um, so I was sort of mentally preparing for that and they were like, no, 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 you're fine. We'll, we'll get you some antibiotics and we'll try and get you home. And I was like, oh, okay. And then about half eight, something just changed. I, the pain was horrific. Like I couldn't, I couldn't talk, I couldn't breathe. I was like, I was sat up on the bed and I was like crawling up the bed like, oh my God, um, what's going on? Adam was then timing them and they were coming quite frequently at this point. And I think after a few times he said, oh, I think we'll call the nurse in a bit, but let's see what's going on. Um, and then at nine o'clock, literally dead on nine o'clock because the clock's right in front of me. Yeah, the heavens open, so to speak, like it gushed. You just heard this pop and then you could just hear like my waters going everywhere. Um, so Adam just sort of looked at me and was like, I'm gonna press the buzzer now, don't panic. You know, it's gonna be okay. And he'd also looked under the sheet as well because I had a sheet over me. Um, and I just sort of saw him like peek under and the, he pressed the buzzer and I was like, oh God, what's like, what's happening? I think I knew, but I didn't know if that makes sense. I didn't really want to accept it. Um, so then my, well, a midwife came in. I think her name was Lucy, maybe, or Lisa. Um, really nice. She was amazing. Um, and I just said like, something's just happened. We don't know what's happened. Um, and I think I kept saying, you need to get me to theatre because like, he's a C-section, I can't have him this way. And she was like, no, no, calm down, like, we'll have a look. Um, and I just remember her like lifting my leg up and the sheet up and just going, ah, right, okay. Um, and they called the doctor in or a consultant in um, and he got one of those spectrum things, I think they're called, you know, when you have a smear test. And he was like, oh, I need to examine you. Now, obviously I could feel everything down there. And I was thinking, mate, if you think you're getting that in, like you're a miracle worker because that baby's down there, like it ain't happening. Um, and he just kept saying to me, stop pushing, stop pushing. I'm like, I ain't pushing, like he, He's there, but I'm not doing this. Like, nothing, I, like I was trying not to push. Like I was like trying to clench, I was doing everything, but I wasn't actively pushing. He was just coming. Um, so he's like, right, I'm gonna examine you. And again, the midwife lifted my legs up to put them on the stirrup so he could do it. And she just went, no, he's like, he's there. Like I can literally see him. Poor midwife, he was bum first, so she could see his bum. <laughs> Um, and then Adam said that at this point the room was swarming with people, but I don't really remember. Someone handed me the gas and air, which was still in my hand once, um, once I'd finished giving birth. I didn't use it. My pethidin had worn off at this point, so I had no pain relief. Um, so I think I'd done about 
two or three pushes maybe um, and he was out that was it he was placed on me he cried which was great because obviously we were a bit worried as to what was going to happen um, and at this point neonatal had turned up with um, one of those resuscitator beds um, to check him over but he was crying he was breathing um, they did have to help him just to clear his lungs um, whilst he was still in the room with me um, so they took him straight off whilst I was still being seen to I had to have my injection um, I think I had to sign or Adam had to sign but I had to agree for the baby's vitamin K injection which we done which was fine um, and I think yeah he was taken away and then they sorted out like my placenta and um, I'd torn so I needed stitches um, to which the nurse just went I think you need to take that gas in here now and I'm bloody glad I did because that was horrendous um, and then we I think we just sort of waited in the room we took a few minutes to be like what the bloody hell just happened um, we did get updates saying like he was fine but they were still looking at him whilst he was upstairs we couldn't go straight away um, so they brought the, the world famous tea and toast which was the best thing ever um, and then I think I remember getting up and saying oh, I need to brush my teeth because I've been sick so much so it's all I could taste so I brushed my teeth I think I changed my pyjamas because obviously the ones I was wearing were covered in everything um, I think I changed my pyjamas brushed my hair like any normal day really um, and then I think I had to sort of I think I had to go and do a wee I think they had to test my wee for something but it wasn't for my infection they said like after you give birth they have to test your first wee or something but I was so knackered I don't know what was going on first wee was fine everyone says about the first wee and I was like no it's fine it wasn't pleasant but it was bearable um, and then I had to sort everything out because obviously I'd had stitches and you know everything was moving um, so I had to make myself a bit more comfortable um, and then I think I had him at 9.14 so my water broke at 9 he was born by 9.14 um, after we'd like gathered ourselves and stuff we rang family and sort of said what happened um, they knew I was in hospital so um, they were just waiting for any updates really and a lot of them didn't believe us um, but we didn't have a baby there to show them that he was here so I was like oh, no he's he's born like he's upstairs um, but yeah he was up there and I, I can't remember what time I want to say they the midwife came back in at about 11 maybe and said like you can go and see him now I think in the meantime they'd weighed him so she came in to tell me how much he'd weighed and it was exactly four pounds um, and then I, I think about 11 they said you can go up and see him which we did um, he had CPAP on which just helps their lungs open a bit so he didn't need assisted breathing he could breathe but because his lungs were a little bit immature um which was why they give you the steroid injections he just needed some help opening his lungs um, but i think he was only on that for about six hours um and then we went yeah we went up saw him the doctor pretty much spoke to adam rather than me because i was still a bit tired and a bit like oh my god what's just what's going on um I do remember just trying to walk out of the labour ward to go and see him and they were even the nurse was like what are you doing and I was like yeah I'm going to see him she was like and yeah you can sit in a wheelchair and I'll take you up and I was like oh okay because in my head I was just like I've got to get up there like let's go what are we waiting for um 
but yeah once we got there he had quite a few machines attached to him um and he just had a nappy on at this point um and he had his tube through his mouth at that time it, we moved it into his nose um but at first it was in his mouth um and then they gave us all the details which i will probably do a like a having a premature baby and having a baby in NICU video because otherwise this one will go on forever um, and then about two o'clock they the labour ward rang and just said like what's going on because basically they had no rooms left so they said like physically and everything she's fine she can go back to the ward um, so we need to like get your stuff out of your room and you need to come down and get it all on. so I was like okay so we went down um, collected everything, packed it all up um, and then they took me up to the postnatal ward um, where, which was the same ward I was in through the night anyway when I had that break between the labour wards um, so I don't think I was in this, I wasn't in the same room as the other ladies again but I did go and see them and they were like oh my god what happened and I told them um and then I don't think I think I just put my case down and I think I put a jumper on maybe <laughs> and I was like right I need to go back uh, it's just it was literally across the corridor so you just walk out of our postnatal ward and then into the NICU ward um, and went back I had to look in my suitcase to see what else I needed Adam to bring me um, so I think he might have popped home and I then said what I needed. Um, also at this point, they were encouraging me to get my colostrum because um, I hadn't done any of that yet because you don't do it that early. Um, you do it at around 37 weeks, I think. I think you have to start. Um, obviously I wasn't there, so. <laughs> um, I started doing that I think I've done a bit on the ward and then I tried it whilst I was next to him um, and he was off the CPAP that afternoon as well so we could actually properly see his face which was nice um, and then Adam came back with my stuff that I needed um, and because they'd only told me I was staying for one night so I only had enough literally for one night um, so he brought all my stuff back in and then I think we stayed with him maybe until about eight, half eight at night. Um, we got to hold him that night as well, um, which was terrifying, but amazing. Um, we hadn't named him by this point either. Um, so we... I held him first and then Adam held him and then he went back into his incubator and we were still going through the name list whilst looking at him. Um, we got it down to three names and then we said right we'll come back again tomorrow and see what he looks like. I already knew what I think I wanted him to be called but I didn't want to say anything. Um, yeah and then I went back to the labour ward or the postnatal ward um, tried to get some sleep but in a ward full of babies that's really hard and also quite sad when you don't have your own with you um so i stayed there the night um i woke up at six to do more colostrum i've done quite a few in between um but yeah i had to do that um because they were putting it in here with his feed and then i went back over to see him on the sunday morning and then I think that was the evening that evening I think we picked his name oh that day we picked his name um and I think at around lunchtime I went back to have some lunch because you could if you were on neonatal even once I was discharged if you have a baby on neonatal you can go into the ward and have some food which is really helpful um, so you don't have to take your own every day or buy your own, everything like that. So that was really good. Um, so I went and had a roast dinner, which was lovely. 
considering it was hospital food. It was actually quite nice. Um, and then I think at around two, someone finally came to see me and I was discharged. Um, to which I was asked, why wasn't I staying? Because my baby was in neonatal, but you know, I was wasting a bit. I was literally waking up at six in the morning, going to his bedside and coming back at eight o'clock at night. So someone else could have had that bed. And I just thought it was a bit of a waste to be honest. Um, and I only live like, I live so close to the hospital anyway. So if anything was to happen, I was really close. I didn't need to be in the hospital, I don't think. Um, and coming home to sleep was, would, once I'd done it, obviously I found out that that was... Hi guys, so um, my battery just ran out there, as you can see, that clip just tallies off. Uh, I think I was getting up to the point where I was saying about um, coming home. So um, I'd once I'd come home and I was sleeping at home and getting the rest overnight, that done the world of good for me. Um, I was able to, you know, pump for him because I, when I came home, I started um, breast pumping um, for his milk because they said that using my breast milk would be better than um, any sort of formula just because of how immature his system was, um, which was fine. Um, so I started doing that um, and then I'd go back in at around half nine every day because I think the consultants done their rounds at 10 so I was always there for that and I would leave at eight half eight at night so I was there all day <laughs> um so yeah I just I got discharged I discharged myself um and at this point they said oh we I'll go and check if you need to go home with any antibiotics because it says you've got an infection and I was like yeah yeah I do need to um because I'd been told that after I gave birth, they said you will need a course of antibiotics to get rid of the infection. And they'd also given him a round of antibiotics in case I'd passed any infection onto him. Um, so they, I think they had to go and get a more like senior midwife to prescribe it. Um, to which that midwife said, oh, I don't know why you don't have an infection. And I said, well, I do because that's all I've been told for the last 24 hours. She's like, no, 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 don't worry. You can just go like we don't need to prescribe you anything And now at the time I was just helping on going to see my son. So I just sort of let it go um, So I came home um, To I had a bath quickly uh, Once I got discharged at two, I, Adam came and got me um, he met me from neonatal we came home, I had a bath, washed like my hair. Um, at this point, my mum and dad had come over as well to see me um, and just help out really. Uh, and then I think about by four, we were back. Um, and that's, I think that's when we named him actually. Um, so we'd got it down to Tommy, Hunter and Finn. Um, but I already knew what I wanted to call him. Like I said, I just, didn't tell Adam because I wanted him to see what he thought he looked like. Um, so yeah, obviously, as you know from my Instagram, his name is Tommy. Um, God knows what we're going to do if we have another boy when we have another baby because it took us ages to get to the, a name. Like our girl's name, we've got it down to three. Um, our boy's name was like 30 names long. So <laughs> God help us if we have another boy. Um, not that mind but it's going to be hard to name him. Um, so that's really my whole birth story. Um, if you want me to do a sort of, I think we spent four, exactly four weeks actually, in neonatal, we did have a trip to another hospital. Um, so if you want me to do a video um, about that, I'll do a poll on my Instagram and see what the results are and if people want me to do that video then I will I just didn't want to include it in this because it would go on forever um, and four weeks in neonatal was a long time um, with a few hiccups so yeah I can do a video on that I absolutely don't mind um, and like I said I think you would have seen it on my Instagram that I'm going to do a follow-up to this video because now everything's calmed down and Tommy's not sort of been in and out of hospital. Um, 
and I found out this service was actually available I didn't actually know um I'm doing like I think they call it a listening service or like a birth review um where they find all your notes and you can talk through your birth and you can also talk through future um things that you want to talk about so like I, I will want to do that because I don't actually know why he came early at the time I was always told my affection caused my uterus to um, be irritated and that's why he came and then but when I was discharged I was told I never had an infection so it was all a bit confusing um, but obviously Tommy was my priority for the last seven months so that's why I've only just got around to doing it um, so I will be doing a sort of birth update or birth review update maybe video once I've had that appointment um, because I thought if I'd done it all in one go I'd be sort of chopping and changing from what I was told happened and what I think happened at the time to then what I was being told in the review and it should be too backwards and forwards so I will do a separate video as to what I'm then told um, in that if it's appropriate to share obviously I don't know what they're going to tell me and everything like that um, so we'll see what happens there I am going to be asking questions about my future children like what's the plan how will I be monitored things like that um, so obviously I hope that will help any of you guys out that may be going through it um, but yeah that that's my birth story in a nutshell um, I hope you enjoyed it I hope um, if you guys have maybe been through something similar or are being told that you might be going through something similar this gives you a little bit of comfort um, and maybe obviously if I do the neonatal journey with you then that will hopefully bring you some comfort as well um, but yeah I couldn't get away with not doing it any longer because on my Instagram it was always like can you film your birth story can you film your birth story so here it is um, I will try and get it uploaded as soon as possible um, for you guys um, and yeah i just hope you enjoyed it um if you did again i know i said this at the beginning but do leave a comment um down below um, and also give it a thumbs up down below as well and if you are not subscribed already then please do make sure you are so you get the updates on when my videos are released at the moment i'm doing one a week um and they are usually being scheduled for around every sunday um so yeah if I have any more time sensitive ones I just want to quickly pop out then I will and I'll let you know um, but yeah every Sunday at the moment is when they will be scheduled to go out and yeah so I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you in my next video which I'm going to go and record now so have a good day